Robert Eggers is uh, someone that when I saw his uh, first feature, The Witch, I reached out to him because I wanted to work with the guy. And then I was lucky enough to work with him on his next feature, The Lighthouse, and it was a very good experience. I really enjoyed working with him because of his detail, uh, because he uh, makes a personal cinema. He does a cinema that uses cinema language. Um, very little coverage, very designed shots, working with uh, Jaron Blaschke as DP. They work very closely. It's a combination of um, being very well designed and very well realized, but also he's an actor. <laughs> he was an actor. He speaks an actor's language. So I love working with him because he works with a great kind of back and forth in the scenes and gives me lots of details and lots of challenges. And I feel always very engaged with when I'm with him. But I think most importantly, he's a, a guy of the cinema, but he's also a student of history and he loves history so deeply. You feel it, that it's infectious and uh, you get drawn into those worlds with him. And as an actor, you just want to help him realize them as, as you can in your role. I like returning to work with uh, directors that I, whose work I like to be a part of and that I like working with. And he's way up there. So he, he just contacted me and said, uh, look, this film is about Vikings, you know, big, tall Norse guys, you know, with shoulders like this and, and you know, 40 years old max, you know. But I have something for you to do in this. So that was kind of good. He wrote this, I understand. Directors say this sometimes, <laughs> but he, he, I think he did invent this character for me. And it's a beautiful character because even though it's less expansive and I'm uh, very much part of the ensemble in this movie, it's a very interesting role because it's very multidimensional. And what I do have to, what I do have to do in the story is very uh, uh, pivotal and also very essential. I mean, there's no fat in this role. So it's very nice for that reason. He is uh, the fool to the king. He's uh, like a jester, but he also, and this isn't apparent immediately, he's a uh, uh, sort of a shaman. He's a, a, a priest. Uh, of sorts, and uh, he conducts a very important uh, ritual in the story. So I would say he's, he's an ally and he's, uh, he's a friend of the king, uh, Arvandir, played by Ethan Hawke. Robert kind of told me what he needed and uh, I think he tapped into certain things he'd seen as far as my uh, energy and uh, my sense of humor and uh, my love to do physical things. And I think he really set me up to do those things. So preparation, preparation, I get sucked into his research. You know, he says, listen, what do you want me to send you? And I'm like, bring it on, bring it on and I'll, I'll cherry pick, I'll see what's useful to me. And in fact, I got very sucked into it because this was a, a time in history and a, and a culture that I didn't know a lot about. So while really, I, maybe it wasn't necessary to go in great depth, it was a pleasure because I learned something and I, I, I started to understand his attachment to it and his love for it. And you get sucked in. And then when you arrive and you see these sets that are made with such detail and such care, it, it helps with the pretending. If acting on some level is really pretending, everything's there. You enter that world and you fold into that world. It's a big muscular film, um, you know, much, much bigger than The Lighthouse. Um, he still is approaching it with the same kind of detail and the same kind of care. And while I may sound Pollyanna, uh, at this point, the producers are fantastic because they're supporting him in that approach. And a lot of that has to do with not just detail in the set, 
but these beautiful shots that are very designed that play as one and have inside each shot has a rhythm and a story and a dynamic that's that's beautiful on its own and he doesn't cover things he doesn't he doesn't protect himself and make the film in the editing room although he's got a great editor in Louis Ford who he's worked with two times before you know there's always challenges to editing um but he he doesn't have all uh, standard coverage so there's a kind of concentration and a kind of engagement that's really all in when you are a performer in these shots there's a there's a precision and there's a demand on you to be really concentrated and you're never outside of it because you have to concentrate so hard be involved so hard and be absorbed into the world to make the shot work it's the same guy but he does he's got like a double life and and this ritual that he does um you know uh as a, a priest to this uh loki figure um is secret it's uh something sacred it's something that's uh only reserved for the king and his son robert's like a scholar in his approach to this stuff because he loves it and of course it's a preparation um so it's basically reading about uh the different figures the customs uh some historical facts what their movements were and whether that's important in order to play these roles i don't know but i enjoy it and it it gives uh an authority to the pretending that you wouldn't have if you didn't have a, an imagination or a taste or some information about that that world because i feel like every time you learn something it kind of expands your imagination or how you imagine a world could be and it helps you not limit what you think is possible in the scene or in the movie they built a town there on this cliff basically very beautiful very this cliff was made for cinema or cinema was made for this cliff i don't know but they built this very authentic very beautiful town and all the bells and whistles uh i arrived and i realized what a large production this is how how muscular how detailed how strong it is there were sheep there were slaves there were townspeople there were lots going on and given the fact that uh robert has these beautiful design shots it's a lot to wrestle with so um but he's up to the challenge but i think it's going to be spectacular a spectacular movie um a lot of my stuff is interior and uh and fairly intimate but some of the action sequences with the boats and with battles is going to be incredible the film language that's being used and the precision and the passion that um uh robert and jaron and the whole team has um this way of shooting a lot of big action sequences without a lot of cutting away you really experience it 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 you aren't numbed just by noise and by fast cutting um these shots are designed there's uh there's a beauty uh to it i think it's special for that from what i've seen and what we've been shooting uh it really taps into what you can only do in a movie you want them to have an experience to enter into this world um to consider another way of being to consider another time to consider themselves in that other time of course there's a story a very complicated story on one level and a very simple story on another level but i think what's going to be really exciting is to see a world that they haven't seen before 
And I suppose everybody says that when they make a film because they're very, um, you know, precious about their little world. But I think uh, the amount of research and the amount of support in uh, what Robert's doing is really uh, impressive. Hi there, movie lovers. Did you know that back in the day, films weren't dubbed over in other languages? Instead, it was common for foreign language films to take over a movie set at night and shoot their own version of the film. For example, an old Spanish version of Dracula was filmed all at night in about half the time and even received better reviews. Make sure to click below to subscribe or on the side for more awesome content.